allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, additions and deletions to the agenda, Melody. Yeah, I have two additions. Award bid for the new landfill cell project and project funds accepted for the road department. We need to possibly take action on that, but I don't have all the information yet. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Williams has not phoned in yet. I know he's out on the Paisley area, so I don't know if he's still in fire briefing. And we'll go ahead and if he calls in, we'll go from there. All right. So, uh, Ben's buddies here. Why don't we just get that so you can get back to work someplace? Sit yeah. on up, buddy. So we'll, we'll start with the addition of the landfill quotes that we received. Um, so, buddy, give us an overview. As you know, uh, we uh, will take these under consideration and possible action tomorrow. Okay. Um, so, what we have here, we have in front of these three quotes from three construction companies here in Lake County. Uh, the first quote, part of you, construction. Um, the second quote, it doesn't have its company name on it. I'm sorry, it kind of got cut off there. But this is Ben Britton um, on New Idaho Road. And it is, he has a construction company. So he came out and gave us a quote on it. And the third one is Dog Lake Construction. So what this is, is to, these are actually two different, if you look, it's actually split up into two different jobs. Um, one, one job being opening the new, um, the next cell on the Thomas Creek Road landfill and stop piling that dirt. And then the, the second quote is for hauling the dirt and spreading it on the old Lake County landfill that was um, supposed to be closed last year. So I got three estimates from them. Um, I did also ask the um, construction companies to give me an estimated time that they could start and when they thought maybe they would be finished with it. Um, I was just saying, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Commissioner Williams is trying to get on. We probably did not do what we need on this phone for him to call. Are you supposed to call someone? Go ahead. I will text. Sorry. I'm listening. I'm going to text. Oh, you're fine. Um, so, Ben Britton, well, I'll send him I send him nine for seven seventy eleven. No. Okay. Sorry about that abrupt interruption there, sir. You got read so many the old man. Well you're just talking the about the quotes, yes. Go right ahead. Um, are you, you want me to lock on that mark? I'm just working on the same thing as that. Okay. Um so um the first quote I'll go over is um Ben Britton. Um so he's estimating material and stockpile at three at three dollars a yard. Um, his work will be performed as weather allows through the calendar year twenty twenty. Um, and then all Doug Lakes doesn't Doug Lakes does not have a estimated time to start on there. I will get that in writing for him, but I know. That is, it's Why don't you go ahead and run home and get caught and get that and get that milk? I'll come back. <laughs> we we got that, James. How's the milk coming along? Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's all right, sir. <laughs> the world we're in today of electronics. Uh, we're I'm in just the getting to my morning coffee. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're in the meeting, and uh, Buddy is going over the three quotes that he has got on the cell development and moving stockpile in the dirt. Uh, you don't have those in front of you, all three of them, because of, uh, well, you're not here unless Melanie emailed them to you, but you can, yeah. So, but anyways, yeah. I'm gonna let him continue, uh, so. Okay, thank you. James, I'll kind of go through them pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good here, since you don't have them in front of you, okay? Can you hear me? 
Did you, did you hear him, James? Yes, I can hear him just fine. I just I put my phone on mute, so I wasn't disturbing anyone. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, James, uh, I have three quotes, one from Beltway Construction, one from Ben Britton, and one is from Pardue Construction. Um, what we've done, uh, we done with them is we're actually quoting on two jobs um, today. One job would be to dig the cell. Um, another job would be to transfer the material to the um, Lake County land, the old Lake County landfill to be covered. Um, Dog Lake Construction's quote to excavate cell number two. Uh, they put quantity at 24,000 yards. We have an estimated quantity from our engineers at 23,500 yards. But they estimated at 2,400 or 24,000 yards at a unit price of $2.50 um, would be $60,000 to open cell number two. Um, move on to Ben Britton's quote, to excavate, excavate a material stockpile next to pit, he's charging $3 a yard um, at 23,500 yards. Um, his total quote comes out to $70,500. Then I'll move to Pardue's construction. Um, their quote to dig and stockpile next to pit, 23,000. 500 cubic yards at two dollars per yard would be forty-seven thousand um, dollars. So then we'll move on to the the hauling of the dirt and placing it on the old Lake County landfill. Dog Lake Construction. Um, they charge three dollars a yard at seventy-two thousand dollars. Ben Britton charged. Um, to haul the dirt three dollars a yard, and his quote came to seventy thousand five hundred. Um, Pardue's third or Pardue's final quote on haul and cover garbage from dirt to stockpile twenty three hundred yards at two dollars and fifty cents a yard at fifty eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So what I would like to do today is you guys take in consideration. Um, obviously the, the, the prices and James as I was saying before I, I asked them to um, jot down a start time and, and kind of a, a when they could get started on a project and and hopefully give it a time frame of when it could be done um, I didn't have that writing from Dog Lake Construction but I can get that from them um, and I would we would want to get that from them if, if we if we consider them doing the job um, ben Britton's was that they could um, perform as weather allows through the year, the calendar year 2020. And Purdue Construction, um, they would like to, if they were awarded the job, they'd like to start digging the pit October 12, 2020. Um, any pit expands in case of awful bad weather, there is more room for garbage. It is planned to take 15, 20 days to dig the pit. And we hope to haul and cover old garbage um, around the same time and plan to get as much done before the rain starts to finish project. If finish project in spring if needed. So there's our there's our quotes for filling of light our digging new pet and filling of it. So the, <clears throat> this I guess I'll use the phrase phase one and phase two. Mm -hmm. Two different quotes. If, if we award tomorrow, will be two different motions for two different quotes. Yes, sir. And um, this follows our contractor review board rules, I know, because you work with legal counsel on all that. So mm -hmm. we'll look at the guidelines on that. Um, I'm really excited that we have three local contractors that's willing to give us quotes. Me too. That's, that's very good. So. Uh, looking forward to make the decision on this tomorrow. Um, I guess uh, one of my questions is, and I, I think I don't see it here, but I know you addressed this, is on phase two, that will all be brought to the engineering grade by them to the level that's available yes. by our DQ and engineering. Yes. So we have, uh, I know all you are aware, but we have. Uh, 
in our closure fund, we have we have money allotted for our engineers. So we will be working with uh, Anderson Engineering as they're digging the pit to make sure everything's degraded and, and shotting stuff. Yeah. And so that's and then we as the landfill will take care of all the erosion control um, that's going to come from the new pit. It's going to uh, the water is actually going to we're going to utilize what's already there for the pit number one and our carry around ditch and the landfill will take care of all the erosion control and the devices to, to keep us within guidelines of the EPA. Perfect. And our water yeah. so. Well done. Um, so what we will probably see at the board is would be in the future because this will come out of the landfill closure fund. Mm -hmm. We'd probably see a resolution to transfer a little bit more money because we're doing phase one and phase two. Yeah, so for phase two, you will, you will, we will have to have a resolution uh, for the closure fund budget. Yeah. And, and we're set with over $600,000 there, and then we'll be replenished over the years by mm -hmm. the amount that the EQ says we put in our closure fund this yep. year. So, yep. Very good. Questions? Other than me, mm -hmm. I guess. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. James, any questions? All right. Questions for me. Thank you. All right. So, buddy, good work. We'll act on it tomorrow. Okay. If you want to be here, be here, but I don't anticipate you will be here. I think uh, you're recommending the low quote. Um, at this time, yes, I am recommending the low quote. Um, and not only just because it's the lowest, but they, you know, they can they can get on it and go. Um, if we had another contractor that was, yeah, I'm recommending. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. All right. We still have three minutes before our timed item. Um, so, I'm looking here for something fast. Um, let's have a short discussion on the road department uh, project funds. Um, we we have that before us. It's uh, for me to sign as the chair. It's the final review and required match uh, for part uh, Lake County Road 312, uh, Chips Hill, and Heart Mountain Road project. Um, don't have a problem with that except for I we don't have the attachment. It says uh, the attachment uh, verification. I asked for that and I was refused. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to proceed or if one of you want to inquire further. James, have you seen that uh, report uh, that's showing project cost and the documented match on the project? Refuse, or could I just backing up? Um, Melanie, who were you asking for? The asking office for manager. That? So maybe if we could have that for tomorrow, I, it just uh, just means it's there. It's just the final part of it. I believe this was a federal federal dollar, probably. The, I believe it was the Forest Highway Program. I'm not sure, but anyways, it'd be nice to look at the documented match on the project. Okay, so you're just looking for the additional attachment to that? Yeah, just uh, you might not have the letter in front of you because you're not in the office. I don't. You don't. Well, I have my laptop up and I'm looking for it, but I don't see it. We'll get we'll get an email to you after the meeting. You can make that happen, Melanie. Yep, yeah, we'll get it to you so you can see it. You'll you'll be in town late this evening. Well, no, I I see this stuff. I just I don't see the. Uh, any documentation that you're looking for, basically. On the so that's what you're wanting. On the bottom paragraph, it says uh, an electronic signature in PDF is an acceptable form of documentation verification. Um, mm -hmm. Above that, Heart Mountain Road project encloses a summary report showing project costs and the documented match on the project. We did receive that part of the document. Okay. It, for our, the Board of Commissioners' official records, or to be going to records, it's sort of good to have a little 
good in the business, you know, I think that's probably where I'm going with that. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll get that information for tomorrow for action tomorrow. Dr. Longer, you're next. Good morning, gentlemen. <coughs> I am Dr. Trace Wanzer, and I'm the executive director of the Wellness Center, and I just wanted to give you some updates on where we are at in our services. So, um, for your information, we have recently secured Dr. Kimberly Humane, who is our medical director. She is reviewing policies and offering oversight of our programs. She recently came down for a visit and toured our facilities, and uh, we are in constant contact with her regarding policies and such. Right now, uh, we are serving 454 clients, uh, and also we are entering into our second phase of licensure. Our first phase was for them to review our charts and our services. The second phase is our policies, procedures, uh, personnel files and such. And so they will probably be contacting you in October for interviews. Also, um, we are in the middle of changing the uh, electronic medical health records. Uh, the Lake District is already on the software program of Cerner and they have completed their transition to that, and we are transitioning from Credible to Cerner as well. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to approach you with some information. You may approach the bench. Thank you. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that, Brad, sorry. Well, I'm happy to give you that opportunity. Judge Faulkner, remember? <laughs> front of you is our latest utilization from EOCCO and as you can see um, our facility is at 85.6 overall for the last quarter um, and we equate that to possibly COVID um, prior to this COVID um, situation we were right around between 100 and 120 percent, but right now we're we're staying steady at 85 in mental health services, and it looks like we are right in order with the other counties as far as our services. The SUD uh, substance use disorder treatment on the next page, as you can see, we are at 100 percent on that. And that's an average over the last quarter. Um, and we aren't as high in services as we were with SUD or with mental health, but we are right there and we're utilizing the capitation funds that we are receiving. The page after that is SUD only services, it's our penetration rate, and our penetration is 3.82% at this time, and we are right in order with all the other counties. Uh, the next one is mental health only services. It's our penetration rate, and that last quarter was 12.53%. And again, we're in alignment with all other agencies that this report is showing. Next, uh, with COVID, currently what we are doing as an agency at, is we are trying to telehealth and use MEND, which is a video platform, in order to meet the needs of our clients. Um, however, with 
some folks that are in our services, I have left it up to the clinicians to make the decision if they absolutely need to see somebody face to face, if they follow COVID guidelines, but yet they are able to see the person and make that happen. Thank you for that. Absolutely. I think that's very important. Very yes, we're trying to be as accommodating as we can with maintaining safety. So, Dr. Walter, can I ask a question? You betcha. So, are we expecting, when this COVID's over, uh, a climb in mental health stuff because of the fact that all of the stuff going on right now is going to cause every mental health disorder that is? Absolutely. Um, in talking with directors around the state, we are all kind of racing for impact, for less, for lack of a better word, um, we're already seeing a, an increase in anxiety and depression because of the isolation, and we are expecting a tidal wave. So are you gearing up for that? Yes, we, we are doing our best to prepare for that. At, as part of that, one of the things I wanted to report to you is we're working on fully staffing our mental health mobile crisis unit in which that team will, we have already started, but they will be able to go out to homes or to the community where the, the folks that are needing our help are in order to divert crisis from going to the ER. So we're already trying to gear up for that. Is, is there two people going to be in that yes. at all times? Or a minimum of two people? A minimum of two people, yes. We have one person now and we're hoping to interview another one here very shortly as soon as we can coordinate with HR. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, we, we are um, pretty concerned about the level of anxiety and depression that we see may happen in the near future, especially if this continues for any length of time. Um, and um, with state funding, which I did not bring to you, but I will bring to you next time I come. Um, we've heard rumors that our budget is going to be cut from the state. So that is going to be putting us in a tough, tough position. You know, by what percentage? It, it's ranged from anywhere from 20 to 25 percent in July of 2021. I think you know, that's craziness. Sorry for that word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, that with an incline in mental health, and then they're going to cut your budget on top of it. To me, it seems like the state needs to be notified that it needs to be the opposite direction. And so, what do you think, commissioners? Well, I, I think. I think the impacts of COVID-19 are going to be that proposal going through the next legislative session. There's going to be several different uh, places we're going to try to cut to get within the budget. Um, I think with that, there will be a lot of uh, arguments why it doesn't need to be cut. And hopefully, it will be less than that. I anticipate from uh, federal on down that there should be uh, other dollars come available because of the impacts of COVID around mental illness, around the impact from this, because it is, it is all the professionals and even those of us that are not professional predict that the impact of COVID is going to be very <clears throat> trying on our citizens. Um, so I, I'm hopeful that there'll be more dollars come down from the Fed side to backfill this. Um, right now, it, what you need to be looking for is any dollars that you can leverage that COVID is impacting um, the CARES dollars, uh, all of anything, any FEMA dollars or anything that you can possibly make that connection for reimbursement. And that, that key word is the reimbursement because you have to spend those dollars and you have to have a place to be able to spend those dollars and get on the hopes of reimbursement. Um, going to be some very trying times for every agency across the United States 
the mortgage, you don't get this mortgage. So budgets have to be balanced. You know, state budgets and everything for taxation and fees. And it's going to be tough times. So I don't know. Absolutely. We're, we're going to be you know, local uh, commissioners and everything. We're going to be battling. And uh, what we see, which battles we need to fight the hardest, whether it's mental health, it's a prison, law enforcement, or whatever it is, but it's going to be tough. Supposed to be tough, so um, not what everybody wants to hear, but uh, I think it's going to be real out there. So you got to be creative, and hopefully, I think one of our biggest things is you know, we all go there, and that's the federal side. There has to be some federal dollars coming in. You have to be seeing impacts right now. Um, just my guess is I see people coming into town. People that need services, it looks like you guys should be inundated with quite a few non clients, local clients, people from out of town. That's just a guess. I don't know. We're definitely seeing an increase in crisis. That's a fact. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I go off. You, you ask me, so I go off. <laughs> <clears throat> it, it's going to be very, we're in trying times. It's going to be very trying to get services on the ground. All the way through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your support. Moving on. Um, I didn't make copies, but we are trying to realign our advisory board to meet the requirements of the ORSs and the OARs. And so I did bring a copy for your review. And I will just leave it here for for you to, to look at. And along with that, and I'll give that to Melanie. Along with that, I have several mem. Uh, uh, let me back up. So, I have, so back to the advisory board. I don't know what you're giving us, but that the advisory board is ours, and that's our responsibility. Right. So if we're not quite in compliance or something, where you get the best marks whenever the state comes through, if that's Jogging us a little bit, let us know. You betcha. Um, we just recently realigned our bylaws and we wanted them for your review before I presented them to the advisory board. Okay. Along with that, we've had several individuals that are interested in becoming advisory members, and I have their applications. Um, they are Charles Pike, Tracy Holgate, Tina. Aguilar and Charles Tweet, and I can leave these with you as well. Give them, give them to Melody, and uh, we need to know what vacancies there are. Uh, yeah, four vacancies, or how many vacancies do you have? We actually have several vacancies um, that we have identified that need to be filled, such as we need. Uh, a current client in Christmas Valley. We need a representative from Christmas Valley. Uh, we have vets, uh, veteran services that need to be part of our advisory board. We just instituted CASA for the first time in seven years, and we, we have a member who wants to be a part of that. We also have a person who's been in services. So there's several gaps that we have identified. So all four of those will, I'm sure, at least what gap they will fill in the point. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Uh, and also, <coughs> we are working on a MAT program, which is medication assisted treatment, and it is for <coughs> primarily opioids. Um, and we are working with Ellen Mauser, who is our nurse practitioner to develop that program and get it launched. And lastly, um, we have a grant from GOBI, Greater Oregon Behavioral Health Incorporated, in which we have been asked to provide Narcan for our community. And we recently got what we call a lockbox. box. And I have brought Patrick with me to give you more information about that. Um, and if you don't have any other questions, I'm done. Well, I, this might be a question for Patrick. Um, I know that uh, our mental health is quite involved in our 
treatment court. Um, how is how is that working through the COVID? Um, are clients getting the best help they can? I know it's unique all the way around. This sort of curious because I'm very much a supporter, you know, a supporter of the treatment court and you know, the people uh, with some bad addictions. It's helped quite a few over the years. But just curious if. I, I see Patrick there usually in court a little bit of an update. Um, we've made, uh, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, we've made some accommodations, of course, we uh, screening people at the door. Everybody wears masks, uh, social distancing in uh, group settings. Uh, we're doing some outside because uh, we have some of the larger groups we can spread them out for. We can only, in our conference room, we can have maybe five clients with proper distancing. Outside, we can have up to 10 or 15 because we've got that huge yard and we've got chairs and tables and so not everybody can keep their distancing. And that's really, and of course, you know, UAs, urine analysis and you know, drug screenings and all that. We've managed to keep all that up so that uh, all the treatment court clients, as well as our regular SUD clients, uh, and probation clients uh, are able to meet all of their uh, accountability requirements. And uh, it's it's been a little bit of a transition, but you know, with it being summer and all, nobody really minded going outside for the groups. Uh, we may have to revamp a few things, uh, separate groups into smaller groups and more of them coming the winter months. But uh, yeah, we, we, we've stepped up in Made the accommodation so that they are maybe all their contacts, all their requirements, and uh, all the stipulations for their accountability for treatment court as well as probation. Well, thank you. Um, appreciate that very much, Patrick. Um, winter is coming on. Um, I think it would be appropriate to use our Memorial Hall of Key, bigger space. You just have to arrange that with Melanie. But, would, you know, uh, I will pass it on. That would be so good. for those clients to get the services during this training time is something that's pretty important. So, you know, just a thought. And then you can have more people to get that. Yeah. Appreciate that because, yes, we have limited space. But by scheduling, we, we like our memorial hall. <coughs> um, it gets used quite a bit for other things, so there's wide open spaces by scheduling. Awesome. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to ask so many questions, but uh, oh, that's okay. That's you don't know until you ask. And we have 16 right now in the treatment court. 16. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, any Patrick, other questions of me before I turn it over? To I just want to thank you guys, all of you, for what you're doing. I also want to. I'm pretty proud of you that you got to be a doctor. <laughs> I haven't publicly told you that, so. I appreciate that permission and compensation. Appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, Patrick Hornberg, I work with the uh, Wellness and Recovery. I'm a CADC and MHA Drug and Alcohol and Mental Health Counselor. Um, a lot to do with the with the COVID and everything, we've had you know increased mental health crises as well as uh, people are self-medicating. Let's put it that way. Uh, increase in drug and alcohol use, and uh, something that I'm sure you've all seen in the news. There's things increased, not just opioids but fentanyl. So there's a you know people are overdosing a lot and. Uh, it's nothing new to big cities, but it ha it has found its way. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot more heroin uh, arrests and stuff in, in recent uh, uh, arrest reports and stuff like that. Narcan is uh, it's naloxone is the drug itself. It's a re opioid reversal drug. Um, through uh, collaboration with Gobi, we've been able to acquire these little boxes as well as Narcan kits. And I can let y'all take a look at these. They're super simple to administer. There's two shots as well as masks and gloves and all of the uh, COVID required stuff in this little tiny kit. 
uh, these would uh, hopefully, with your permission, we would be able to uh, put one of these up in the court or in the courthouse building. Uh, they're open for anybody. If somebody in the building comes in, uh, and it could be as much as I accidentally took too much of my pain meds and somebody could overdose. Uh, unfortunately, you know, somebody with a, a drug and alcohol problem, an SUD, primarily opioid problem, would come into the building. Uh, it's super simple to administer. The instructions are in here. I do offer quick very to the point of trainings on how to administer it, uh, which, you know, I turn on request, not a problem at all. But uh, if they open to the public, these are not locked. Anybody in need of them are, are welcome to utilize them, the kits themselves, and we uh, would only need to be informed that the kit had been used and we could replenish it that day with a fresh one. And we do monitor all the expiration dates and everything as well on down. But uh, what we were asking is if there would be a way for us to be able to put one of these up in your building. And uh, so that this resource was available to the public as well as uh, there are other businesses in towns that have agreed to, uh, we would like to have them put in their building, including Ace Hardware and a few others around town that are willing to put them up, as well as some of the gas stations that are frequented by, uh, let's see, IV drug users. <laughs> so, um, we, Commissioner Williams brought this forward. We had some discussion on, on this and uh, concerns on who's trained, who's not, because well, none of us are versed on this, so this is helpful. Um, as a commissioner, for my mind always goes to what's our risk, what's our responsibility that we put it in there. If somebody misuses it, if it's not locked, or nothing, and, uh, or if it is used and used inappropriately, what's the risk to that employee or that citizen once it's in our building? So, do you have any? The good smarts and laws as they read, unless you are a doctor and you are acting in good faith, you are not liable civilly or criminally. What about as a government agency and having it here? You are protected by good Samaritan laws as well. Um, Narcan itself, if it is used, I could take that out right now and I'm 100% clean and sober and spray it up my nose right now and it would absolutely cause no effect whatsoever. It does not work on anything but opioid reversal. If somebody you were concerned that they were having an opioid overdose and they had simply passed out, you know, fainted. It would have absolutely no effect on that, none whatsoever. That's the way the drug works. Uh, it is so simple. If you can use no spray, you can do this. I can offer the trainings. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes at the very, very most. The instructions that are in here that come with this are both inside the box and inside the kit. It's three simple steps. And all the safety stuff, the gloves, uh, face covers for the victim, everything is included in there. It is it's extremely simple. It's as simple as, like I said, using no spray for your allergies. That, that, that clarifies quite a bit, Patrick. Um, mm -hmm. I was concerned if it was administered wrong that there would be side effects or something. Nope, none whatsoever. Nope. Uh, what Narcan does basically is the opioid receptors in your brain that have the opioids attached to them, which are giving you the high, the euphoric. Narcan's kind of like a like a bouncer. It just goes and kicks them off of the receptors for a while and locks the door. And it only lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours at the very most. That's why there's two doses in here, depending on uh, how quickly responders can get to them. The very first thing you do in any emergency situation, <coughs> dial 911 before proceeding. Oh, and uh, like I said, everything is in there. It, you are covered by good Samaritan laws, and the drug itself is harmless, with the exception of when somebody wakes up from an opioid reversal sometimes they can be physically ill or agitated 
you know, but other than that, there's no risk. Thank you. And I can provide you uh, with that documentation if you would like. I, I would think so, and naturally we will check with our attorney to make sure yeah. that the Good Samaritan law protects us because of sometimes when you're government, you're looked at for deep pockets and other things. So, yes. um, so you're wanting to have one for the whole courthouse or two or what are you looking for? Um, at least one uh, that's accessible to not only staff in the building, but the public as well. Because, you know, we are a pretty close knit community and we do have a lot of good Samaritans that walk our streets every day. They're willing to step in and help somebody in need that they're a medical emergency, you know, happen in their presence. Uh, we could also uh, place them uh, possibly up in the jail up there. If somebody comes in uh, and has, let's say, hypothetically eaten a bunch of their stash rather than getting busted with it. If they have heroin or something, they could go into a, a heroin overdose in the town. So we like to have this available for them as well. And we can request as many of these boxes as needed. And, and will this, you say you'll monitor the, the dates, the expiration dates, keep them full? And yes, sir. Will that do that first one? Will that go on forever, or is there an end to this? Uh, is there a date that you're not going to go get these kits? These kits are available to us free, and we can also uh, get them from the pharmacy and have them ordered to us for free, too. So this is self-sustaining, no cost to uh, anybody, y'all or anybody in the, here in the building or anything. We, we take care of it all. And should anything change, we, I'll be the very first one to let you know. But right now, the way everything looks, I have, I think, close to 30 of these kits. The 24, 25 of the red ones, and there's a couple more. There's two separate ones, one for CPR, one with an Narcan. We do have an abundance of these right now, and we can have a whole other case of 24 delivered to us within a week, which would last quite a while. And it does have a very long shelf life, so yes. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm much more comfortable now. Naturally, I should check with our risk management through our insurance and through our legal counsel. I'm much more comfortable. Appreciate this presentation. And off the top of my head, I see a minimum necessary two if you're talking to the jail. And then we have probation. We have the state court system upstairs. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for the state court if they would allow one or not. But the four year to there is dependent. So that's just my thoughts, um, commissioners, and, and also maybe the annex and this as well. Absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And we will more than likely put some up in our facility as well. well thank you very much for clarifying all that stuff for us, Patrick. If you have any more questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me. I can provide you with any documentation or anything that you need. Okay. Um, so, Melanie, Burden falls on you to follow up with legal counsel and Jay on our risk management side of it. And once we get that, uh, my consensus of the board to go ahead and allow. I know it's not a normal meeting day, but consensus of the board after we don't have the risk to allow them to be put in. James? I'm comfortable with that. Thank you, Patrick, so much. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Consensus of the board after our, we check on our risk management side. Uh, I, minimum of three mechanics, one in the jail, and I, I would take recommendation from you guys to where you think would be most accessible to potential use here. So, well, I can speak with the other uh, agencies and partners in the building and find out where they would be comfortable with them as well. The, the follow up I would like to have once they're placed, if everything's allowed, is for you to offer to the county employees the training. Absolutely. Melanie can help you get out a LinkedIn email to all employees, department elected officials who are doing the training, maybe downstairs in the memorial hall. You may get one, you may get a dozen. Um, so, are we missing any county facilities? Um, Annex was a great thought. Um, I, I don't believe we would 
the department that fits their need. That was policies and procedures out there, and you don't have that much public. And if you think of someplace else as county jurisdiction, let us know. Looks like the most thank you very much. So thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Now we Ms. Lasley, you're up next on uh, coordinated <coughs> public trans transportation plan. So you guys know I've been working on my state transportation improvement fund application. Um, this is a part of that. It has to be updated every three years. It was last done by Middleson and Associates, and ODOT said it would be fine to update a few of the different things and and have it approved. So I think it's a fun read to see our assessment in Lake County and our needs. Um, and I got all of the tables updated to the latest information and we're ready to be approved now. And I will submit it to ODOT after that. So Melanie, you are truly a very humble person. The amount of work you put into this yourself and ODOT pushed on you mm -hmm. to get this document ready is not the norm. It's a labor of love. Thank you. Like I said, you're a very humble person. Um, I appreciate your work on this. This is very good. I haven't reviewed the whole thing. As you said, it was consulted with them the last time. This was pushed off to us, you. And so your work on this is commendable. Your, your professionalism, thank you so much for that. And we will be for action tomorrow. Uh, is there any questions on the people had a chance to review or commissioners have any questions or concerns? No questions. So I just echo your thoughts on all the outstanding development that's done on that job. So the rock star stats. There you go. Thank you. We'll act on it tomorrow. Um, next thing in the fourth minute. This is also you, Melanie. Yeah, so I was prepping for this yesterday. I've been swapped. Um, and I noticed that it was for um, Jefferson County in the appendix. So I verified with um, OHA and they sent us the wrong one. So you may have noticed that one of the things I noticed is that we're getting $618,000 for the next year. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And then I realized it was for Jefferson County. Um, so we're actually we'll take it i know until we out yeah so we're actually getting two hundred forty three thousand six hundred twenty three dollars for the fiscal year for public health services which is the same as this last previous year and then it outlines the programs that judy will be implementing and then it has some metrics for her to comply with Good catch because I hadn't fully really reviewed it until I looked and I seen the Jefferson County. So yeah, so I got you guys the new one yesterday afternoon um, with the corrected attachment. But the first part was our document. Okay. Uh, any questions? Let's be acted on tomorrow. Not for me. All right. Um, well, that's what I have for. Our regular business is prepared for tomorrow. We do have a couple people in the audience. I know it's not a normal uh, regular session for public comment, but during these trying times, uh, the mayor is here. Did you just here to, to set through our meeting, or did you have anything, Mayor? I did. Come by. Appreciate that. Uh, Ginger, I know just you're working <coughs> through the LCT with um, trying to help out in Medford, Lake County, Paisley, and all. Do you have? <clears throat> Any updates or anything, or are you just sitting through a meeting also? Just sitting through your meeting, just seeing, you know, what the latest is. I mean, I think we got um, good information this morning, and we took the the um, supplies that we had out to the fairgrounds this morning. Some folks took them out, and um, we're in the process of <clears throat> thinking um, through uh, if we want to continue to gather things downtown here because I think it's getting confusing about where people should go 
So I think it probably should go to the fairgrounds if there's people there to receive it and um, organize it. Yeah, so I yeah. know that there were some folks that went out this morning to offer some assistance, and I don't know, you know, I don't know how that <clears throat> how that transpired. But so uh, I'll put on my fair board hat real fast uh, to to get everything. Everybody that's working on this in one central location would help get it out. So, yeah, I think so. Um, I think that would be really helpful. On, on my part, as a fair board member, working with Ronnie would be acceptable yeah. to me. The more, the more we get out to Paisley and the other people coming into our community, and I consider Correct. Mark has quite a bit to say. Yeah. He's been working on that. But well, the we more, know the more we can get out there, the better off. Right, right. And I was going to go talk to. Um, Ronnie, as soon as I got through here, <clears throat> about that very thing, because I know that you know she's sort of, she's the manager out there, and we know that we're getting more people every day from the Rogue Valley as they um, are not able to <laughs> get the <clears throat> shelter is the biggest issue for them right now, and we don't know exactly what it is that they need, and we don't know exactly where they all are. Some of them are going to Red Cross, but not very many. So, and not as many as I think we have in the community. So we don't know what resources they're going to need or where they're staying might need resources because they've got they've taken on you know more more people in their homes. So we're just kind of waiting to see. I, I, I know I, I know the mayor, and he probably don't want to talk about, but he has some thoughts of trying to a little bit longer term. Yes. You know, there's going to be short term and there's going to yes. be long term. Absolutely. Um, but if, if everybody that's working on that can sort of get that consorted effort. Yes. Uh, on our call this morning, there was talk about um, on the on the land use and staying in RVs uh, that there needs to be some, some changes. Yes. Mark has worked on that. I don't want to speak for you, Mark. Uh, there's some ways that that's allowable under certain circumstances. So. Um, I think there's a lot of people working on this, and it's just uh, we're we're going to see an impact. It sounds like this huge county, which would be natural, is getting a huge impact because of that central Oregon <coughs> right. the west side. A lot of people coming there, and so right. Um, and, yeah, I think I, the initial impact I think is handled well here. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen in Paisley, and I know that they've gotten a lot of resources. My concern at this point is that we don't know we don't know what the influx is going to be here and i think we have to kind of look forward <laughs> to um what that might be and um it's it's you know you can't know what you don't know but i think we need to preserve what we've got here um so that we can can respond when we can i know klamath county has been incredibly incredibly generous they how many trucks have they sent over mark I've lost count. I know, I know. It's just amazing. I mean, we've had a lot of support here in our own community, but Klamath County has really stepped up to the plate in bringing um, supplies over that I know have ended up in Paisley where they're needed. So, so Commissioner, can I make a complaint? Absolutely. So, I apologize because I've lost complete track of days. And so, I don't know <laughs> the exact date. I think it was Friday. Um, we set up at the fairgrounds, Red Cross came, but thanks to Mr. Gary Kikert, um, Klamath County has been outstanding. The commissioner, all the commissioners of Klamath County, um, Klamath County Fairgrounds, uh, there's a plethora of Klamath County organizations that have delivered stuff and um, at a moment's notice and so going back to that uh, if we need anything uh, just let me know and I will make the calls and we'll have it here within hours and that that doesn't I mean we're not limited on anything as far as what we can, what we can acquire Timber Unity has a truckload of clothing um, available. I told them to send it to Talent in Phoenix because 
Paisley has a fund, and so the need for the clothing wasn't there, but it was somewhere else. But if we do, God forbid, happen to need that, we can still get those organizations to help us with those things. Um, as far as the people other than the Paisley residents, they can also go down to the fairgrounds and register with the Red Cross and they will provide them temporary housing and full-time housing if they've lost their homes. And so just talk to the representatives down at the fairgrounds that are taking care of that end of the, the uh, uh, Red Cross representatives. They will be here until um, Paisley is back down to a level one, and um, they have to officially be at a level one before they will move out of our community, which they have been outstanding too. The Red Cross has been outstanding. Um, and so the town of Lakeview, LCP, um, every member of the town council is part of this. Jill Perry's health, Ginger's health, and of course, our community has been overwhelming help. And so, you know, I don't want to try to name everybody because I don't, you know, we'll, we'll, I don't want to leave anybody out. It's just, it's just been, it gives you great faith in the community and humanity. And so, it reminds me why we're why we're doing this job. So, um, so I, what I would like to do on LCP's behalf is, um, you know, make sure. I mean, we'll make sure that everything gets out to the fairgrounds, and <clears throat> we'll be there off and on in the annex all week. But um, you know, rather than manning the annex, it seems like it would be. A lot more important at this point in time to for our volunteers <clears throat> and the people that have stepped up to the plate that we know about and that are wanting to be of assistance that we might possibly be able to guide them to the fairgrounds you know to um, to offer their assistance I'm not sure you know who they might want to talk with or I don't know if it would be Ronnie or um, so, you Mark or so I'll be out there when I'm not in these meetings, I'll be at the fairgrounds or in between the fairgrounds and Paisley okay. until this is over. Um, we can make it so Ronnie's around all the time. She has been around right. all weekend. She was available to us. Um, and so when I'm not there, Earl, the, the fellow from the Red Cross, he's going to be there. 24-7. Um, my trailer's down there, but I did go home last night and sleep in my own bed. And um, but I will be around. You can give people my cell number. I have no problem okay. with that. Um, and so if they need anything, <clears throat> they can do it. Um, as far as cash donations, real quickly, um, I thought you know we we got a couple hundred bucks for their. Um, pantry um, in Paisley. We filled the pa pantry in Paisley to overflowing, the, the community centers overflowing. Um, and so I thought, you know, Paisley, um, the town of Paisley, since it's so small and they don't get a lot of financial money and that sort of thing, I thought it'd be great for right now, if people want to make donations to the city of Paisley, just to give them a boost, and then they can um, offer projects and do the things that they see fit with that too. And so that would be great. Now, I, I told Commissioner Albertson, uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, all the stuff that we took over last Friday to uh, Ashland, TC Chevrolet. Over half of that has already been distributed over there in the Phoenix Talent area, and there's still more to go. They have 
a um, couple sites set up over there that they're distributing everything that we took over. Very good. Um, so I have, I have just some thoughts or questions, I guess. So we're going to see the impact. Uh, we, we all hope Paisley is secure, but we're going to see the impact of our neighboring counties that lost homes and everything, uh, plus the impacts here. So we have to look further down the road. Right now, we're getting all the things that's going on. Um, is there anybody through LCP or have you up with anybody that is tracking this for FEMA reimbursement? And there's people out there that has that expertise that's in the volunteer world, but there's going to become a time here shortly that people are going to say, what did you expend? And this may be allowed through a FEMA reimbursement. <clears throat> so I would encourage either LCP or whoever you're working with to be thinking that some of these displaced people may be in Lake County for a year and may need to build leverage FEMA dollars. There's going to be assistance available there. So uh, when you're in a rural community like this, we just don't have the depth and personnel and staff and expertise. So it, it, and I look at you, Ginger, because I know you you've done a lot of <laughs> well, things in your life, but and you got a lot of good people on your board. And I mean, is there anybody that has some expertise dealing with that over the years that can help organize maybe that for the longevity? Yeah, but, there, I mean, right now the immediate you there, guys are rock stars. Things are happening. But there probably it, is. There probably is. What I what I don't know is exactly. <clears throat> I have a couple of people that I think would have that expertise that I know of but you know if I get concerned about doing bits and pieces without having some sort of um, connector glue that keeps the process together and um, I, and I don't know I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure that the county can offer that glue um, I think there's people out there that can really be helpful and if there's some so, overarching task force or I don't know I mean I don't want to get too complicated or anything like that because we've all got a lot on our plates because we've so, got everyday things and then this on top of it but um, you know it might be worth having a little conflab about how you know some of those things the short term and the long term and how those are going to shake out with the county and the town involved and and so some I, of the I'm leadership. Gonna, I'm gonna throw this out there um, in a, in if it sticks, it does. If it doesn't, <laughs> I've thrown it towards Commissioner Albertson and my fellow commissioner, uh, Williams. Um, we done a coalition with the chair that wasn't a county chair um, employee for the prison coalition. Right. I'm not one to put committees together and everything just to do them, but this might be a, a time of mark where you're sort of lead on this. Um, I want to pull together a coalition of Town, LCP, one commissioner, or whatever, and uh, and uh, to bring that, maybe put that glue together. Just a thought, not not to make a decision right now, but absorb that. If you guys that are right in the mix of it, if that would be helpful to do a short time coalition that could be until the end of uh, the necessity. Um, it sounds like the town is quite involved, LCP is quite involved, we're quite involved, um, is a sort of possible thought. I think that's a great idea. Um, we are taking all the names of the displaced people that have come through the fairgrounds, not only the Paisley residents, but also the residents that don't live here. So we have that information. Um, um, my wife's actually volunteering to help Daniel with some of the paperwork stuff today up in Paisley. She should be heading that direction now. And so, um, and then Mel's possibly, if she has time, and then uh, I know she's got a personal thing to take care of tomorrow. But after that, that we can start getting that stuff together. And so, we're kind of working. Kind of working on it. So okay, so I I just thrown it out there. Um, don't 
don't want to undermine or overmine anything. Uh, just making <laughs> suggestions out there. Well, it, it might be really helpful if we can get some PSAs or something out. Um, obviously, the newspaper would be a good place, but on the radio stations for anyone that's here in Lakeview that has been displaced that hasn't registered with the Red Cross to let them know where and how and all of that because I don't know that a lot of that has been happening. Yeah, of I, course, I, I've notified the, the paper and um, RC at KRB. Great, so. great. Just didn't hear it yet this morning. They may not have it up and running, but that's good. Very good. So I, I think that's a pretty good liaison update from your side of the world. <laughs> um, Ginger or Sheriff Park, not sure. Mayor, do you have any, anything else? No, I don't. Not this time. All right. Uh, Commissioner Williams, do, do you want to do any kind of update or liaison update at this time? Uh, sure. And actually, I do have um, a, uh, an addition to the agenda and for just uh, just real quick, if I can touch on it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, our emergency declaration yesterday, did we finalize the language on that? Hey, good question. Did I overlook that? I do have it in front of me. Melanie had that in front of us. Um, she reworked after your comments, took out um, the one section. So yes, that is okay. Is in front of us. Um, okay, just wanted to clarify, make sure that that was that one section was taken out. I, that was the only thing that I had an issue with. Everything else looks good on that uh, on that one version. So yeah. All right, Melanie, did I speak correctly? That's what you done was tuck that section out, and so um, it's it's in front of us. Uh, we've already approved. We just have to sign the. Approved uh, resolution, and you're good with that. After that section was taken out, yep. Just the part about the recognizing a clear and present danger for Lake County. I, I didn't feel like that had any bearing on the current situation. Okay, Mark. So why why did you think that, James? Uh, it. I think we were declaring, uh, we were talking specifically about fire um, and uh, about the actual danger that the fire poses. And I think that the uh, declaration uh, sums that up pretty well on its own. The, the section regarding fair and present danger is actually a, uh, a doctrine adopted by the Supreme Court of the United States to determine under uh, what circumstances limits can actually be placed on the First Amendment freedom speech, press, or assembly. And I didn't think that had any bearing on this particular document. And uh, um, that's all I had on that. So. Okay, so uh, yesterday uh, I was invited to the call with the governor and other uh, commissioners with uh, where there was a fire and the fire problems, disasters going on. And the question was asked, is it important for counties to do a disaster declaration? Because the, the governor has already done that, plus we have the federal designation also. And the uh, answer to that, I forget for staff person that answered it is, is they're not necessary, but they might help leverage the local things. I believe it's necessary. Necessary. Um, we done it, and if uh, Commissioner Albertson's good with the revised one, we'll sign it by consensus. You're good. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm by, good with that. By consensus, we'll sign that uh, resolution declaring the existence of state of emergency for the fire manager. All right. Uh, other um, liaison updates. Yep, uh, so this morning um, I, we met with the IC. We had a very, very eventful night. Um, I do not want to go into the details of which because I feel like we were able to iron out a lot of the problems that we were having in terms of communication. Um, there were some issues last night that started right around midnight. Uh, Daniel Kay ended up having to go back. 
fire did end up jumping uh, a portion of the line. And uh, just in terms of utilization of resources, it uh, just things got bogged down a little bit. But we worked out a lot of those differences this morning, had a very good conversation, uh, not only with uh, the IC and uh, BLM and the Forest Service, but also with our RFPA and uh, some of the shareholders, uh, the stakeholders, sorry, the um, uh, Green Diamond was there along with ODF. And uh, we had a very good conversation in terms of uh, um, what we can do better moving forward. Uh, there was, it's, it's always difficult uh, when, the, when the Tycoon 2 team took over yesterday at 6 a.m. Um, it takes a little bit of time kind of getting their feet under them. And also, uh, they were hit with a very severe weather event that caused a lot of uh, problems. And uh, I'm just really grateful for all the men and women that uh, have done such a fantastic job on this fire um, in terms of just dealing with the elements that have been thrown at us and the situations and the fact that we've got a fire that's moving in two completely different opposite directions at the exact same time uh, spread miles and miles apart. Um, it, it presented itself a lot of challenges and a lot of complexity. I'm just really grateful to the team so far what they're doing. Uh, they're really making huge efforts in trying to sum up and um, fix some of the communication breakdown that we were rushing into. So I'm really hopeful. Is there any questions on that? I, I don't, James. Uh, just thank you for working on because of the communication breakdown happens occasionally, especially, and you articulated pretty well the complexity of this fire and uh, basically one fire that's burning like two. So um, thank you for working on that. Yeah, we, uh, the uh, painfully, of course, is still at a level three. Um, you can uh, get updates uh, from the response page and uh, the board service will be able to provide you with exactly where the level three begins and ends. I believe we have a current level one that extends all the way to the Pitchrock Pass, um, just because they're concerned about heavy winds moving into the Watson Creek and some of the previous year burnouts and fast burning fuels and strong winds. But um, they're doing their best to get ahead of it. They made huge progress late last night. They managed to get ahead of it. Um, but then it jumped the line again. And, you know, just just those those issues that present themselves. Um, they, we've got more resources in coming. Um, we're really hopeful that we can still really put a damper on this. Uh, Highway 31 is currently open. Um, there was a lot of confusion about whether or not the highway was open. Um, we've established a little bit of, you know, protocol now. If, if the ODOT chooses to close Highway 31, they are also to notify our county road superintendent to let them know because there will be off, um, overloading traffic, uh, overflow traffic on this county road as a result of that. And uh, we just want to have everyone working together to make sure that not only board commissioners, but also our other county uh, departments are aware of those changes when those things take place. Um, because uh, closing a major state highway uh, that connects both the north and south end of our county is, uh, is a big deal for any extended period of time. So um, we kind of sum that issue up. Really grateful to everyone willing to work on some of those things. Um, I think personally, this is just coming from me. Uh, I think our guys are getting worked out. Um, no pun intended. Uh, it's uh, it's very challenging through extended deployments for a lot of our guys, our FBA and volunteers. Um, uh, I know a number of these guys have not um, slept in their beds for for five, six days. And um, are you still there? Yeah, we're still there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think someone's trying to call me. Uh, and you know, not having, you know, been able to shower or even go home because you're just sitting on the line for five days. It's, it's rough, and in uh, leadership positions, people's uh, people's patience wears very thin, um, and uh, a lot of frustration. And uh, with weather events and everything else, yeah, it gets very challenging personality differences and everything else. But we're 
was really working through this stuff. So I, that's kind of all I've done as far as an update. I know even the legislators are working at different things and trying to help out. We're all doing our level best, and I appreciate all the efforts from everyone all the way around uh, in terms of everything that they're doing. Commissioner Alberson, Tanya, and the Red Cross folks, they've just been absolutely incredible in terms of just running down a paper and delivering food and resources to our community center. Um, yes, the town is evacuated, but uh, when you evacuate a town, there's also, you know, where it's, uh, you're so cut off and the next town is 50 miles away. Um, Getting supplies and access to things uh, is very difficult. Uh, so, uh, Ralph actually still opened the store, but still going, and uh, we're serving food at the community center because there are still people that are here in the town. And uh, we're just uh, going to do our very best to keep everyone safe. So far, no structures lost, no loss of life or injury, and we're very grateful for that. Appreciate the update, James. Um, uh, is there any, are they presenting any containment of this fire at this time? Is it still at zero? I am not entirely sure if it, if it has moved up. I, I believe last time I heard it was at zero percent still. Um, if that has moved, uh, someone can correct me. Um, I don't believe I've seen the brief on the Forest Service yet today. But in the briefing this morning, I don't even believe you mentioned it. I think the focus was more in terms of just the stop the fire. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty well said. It's just a lot of the people are asking about how level of containment it's at. Now. And to my yeah. knowledge, it's still at zero. Is that 15%? Yeah, it's hard to. Hold on, it's hard to establish that. Go ahead. Wait, Go ahead. Sorry, um, we received an update from the Forest Service this morning that said it's at 15% containment. Oh, I, if you didn't hear that, Danielle said they got a report from this morning that it's at 15% containment. Okay, that, that actually makes a little bit of sense because we there are huge portions of this of the lines of this fire that are contained and uh, or at least uh, secured, I should say. I'm using the proper language. Um, so, yeah, and, uh, that, that probably sounds about right um, after the briefing this morning in terms of where resources are going to be deployed today. Um, I, I, I do know that every, it's all hands on deck and the guys are really working to bust off to put a stop to this. And uh, Green Diamond and Collins are at the table in terms of the big stakeholders. Um, they, they're definitely wanting to protect their lands and Good to have all the parties at the table um, talking through this and working through what we can do together instead of working against each other. Very good. Thank you. Questions? I, I just wanted to add that, you know, the south end of the fire, of course, we're concerned with the north end because of Paisley and Summer Lake, but we also have to be concerned with the south end of the fire because the holdings of Fremont Sawmill has a ton of timber in there, and we all know that you know we can't lose that timber, and we can't lose our sawmill. To the west, is, to the west is threatened because that's green di a lot of green diamond holdings, and of course um, we know that Red Rock is going to get a lot of their their uh, lodge pool from green diamond, and so we got to we got her get her knocked down on each side. Is the red flag warning still up, James, for high winds today and tomorrow? Or have they changed? And have you seen um, the National Guard helicopters on the job this morning? Good question. I have not seen any National Guard helicopters, I believe. Uh, through briefing this morning, air attack uh, and air support was going to. Um, fully online around noon. Um, they've been briefed somewhat already and they're just squaring up a few things and they'll be up in the air at, at by noon or, or heading that way. Um, I have not seen any other air activity this morning. The, um, uh, your, your first part of your question, Mark, forgive me, go back to that. 
It was. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. And so, about the so, south and the west, holding the south and west yep. lines. Right. Right. Oh, uh, weather warning. The uh, uh, red flag. That's what it was. Um, yes, there is still a red flag in effect for the day, um, and they're predicting at least a couple more days. Uh, either today and tomorrow, um, hopefully on Thursday, things calm down. I won't actually set rain on Thursday, but uh, it, it's like now you can try to predict the weather, wait five minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, any other ways on that thing? I have one, but it's gone. It's gone? It's gone. Um, so, uh, Please, on updates for me, um, reinstituted uh, at least bi weekly meetings based around um, railroad and Chrissy Grant and the dollars uh, that we're leveraging for the enhancements of our railroad. Um, as Commissioner Albertson just set in uh, last week, uh, as he's been working on starting work towards the RIMS, which is a, a tax credit, we'd like to have a We'd like to have our congressmen and senators support a pilot program on the Fremont, Wyneema, and Modoc for federal lands to qualify for those rents, which would enhance and help uh, Red Rock, and at the same time, it would help to get ahead of these catastrophic fires in a fire resilient forest on the federal lands. Um, so, we're uh, working on that. Uh, Chrissy grant, we changed our scope of work a bit from the original grant. The grant is $5.6 million, almost a one to one match. We, uh, the Board of Commissioners supported a loan from Business Oregon of 2.9 that would be serviced over the years by the shippers. Uh, a lot of things going on. We have not got the notice to proceed at this time from the FRA based around our scope of work uh, being approved. We will not be doing no work down on the bridges in the stream flow areas, so the scope of work will not have a lot of NEPA and other things that have to be done. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get that notice to proceed, accept our scope of work, and start drawing down those dollars um, late fall. I'm not sure we're talking November, and it all depends on the weather, whether the track can be worked on, the freeze is up or not. So, um, that's real important for the hazmat to be shipped on the Lake County Railroad. Um, they have seen an uptick from uh, emeralds, which is a form of pollen or cornerstone on shipments. So um, that's an update there. Uh, I do have uh, an executive board meeting with SCO Act here in the first part of October. I encourage both commissioners to get involved in the SCO Act. Um, right now, without any dollars coming down through uh, ODOT projects, a lot of times SCO Act doesn't seem to have a purpose. But if we don't stay at the table at SCO Act and dollars come available, we won't have our hand out at the right time for our voice there. So I encourage both of you to get involved, whichever one of you is sort of fall into place or very comes on which one but stay involved in that so um, I believe uh, I'll be presenting a pretty good argument to the executive board of why it's what needs to continue on yeah, we, we don't want to lose that voice in, in the middle of our agency so um, with that I, 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 I remember what I was going to say now okay sorry, All right. <laughs> sorry. Um, I also want to thank our road department Last night, um, they deployed two more water tenders up to the fire. Um, I don't, it was late yesterday evening by the time I got them, and those guys brought them right up. And I just want to thank them for that. Um, James, do you have Paul, the superintendent's number, and Paisley? I believe I might. Uh, I can look and see if I can forward it to you. Thank you. Yeah, just text it to me, please. Um, yep, absolutely. I, I have to say that sort of gives me flashbacks 
on the water that came that I worked with employee they got called three in the morning when I worked for the road department to go out on the fire with water tender 25 years ago. So I just sort of had a moment there for sure. Well they went up the night before then they cut them loose but this time they're going up for a little while. So anyways uh, I'm very thankful for that. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I did want to share with you guys too is that um, we're putting a uh, Daniel was notified that um, the state is sending him a National Guard liaison. So Daniel will have to be uh, setting up an EOC, and I'm going to work on that as soon as this meeting's over and get that set up, probably at the school in Exit. So, all right. Um, I can uh, give a quick update on the visitors from the legislators. Yes, that would be appropriate. Thank you. So, uh, I am meeting with uh, Representative Iverson at around 1 o'clock today in Christmas Valley. Um, we will be heading south into Paisley. She is looking to get a little bit of an update on the fire sometime around 3 o'clock today. Um, and uh, from the IC, and uh, we're, we're still working that out. Um, the IC is really looking forward to it. Um, just hope, hoping that nothing's too chaotic by 3 o'clock today to where it, it is still possible. Um, but uh, if not, we will be in town later this evening. Um, tomorrow, 10 o'clock, for our regular work, um, regular session, uh, Representative Owens. Representative Iverson, as well as Senator Finley, will also be joining us, along with uh, Toby from the railroad, um, Joaquin from Red Rock, and uh, Steve Brown from the uh, uh, prison. Uh, they will hopefully be attending our um, morning meeting as well. So um, that's what I've got so far, and we look forward to maybe doing a little bit of a tour um, in the afternoon after the uh, morning uh, regular session. So James, are we having coffee with those guys in the morning? I believe so, yes. Is that at seven? Uh yes. At the time I, I think uh Senator Finley uh wanted to make sure he got his coffee by seven. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, James, for everything you're doing up there. Thank thank you for the update. Okay. Um, Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Uh, today's a sort of unusual meeting, but you came in. Hi, guys. <coughs> Sorry to interrupt. You can come down here. Okay. Thank you. I know this is unusual. My name is Kristen Singleton. I um, grew up here, kind of. I grew up in Blythe, actually, but uh, I am a resident of Lakeview. And I want to address something that is very concerning to me. I am uh, very upset right now, so please bear with me. Um, I know we don't have any city police here, but I want to address something that is very... Um, the traffic around the schools. I live there. We have people who speed down I Street, 4th Street, 3rd Street, in front of the high school, 80 Hay, and Fremont. We do not have enough police present in front of those schools, in front of my house, in front of those residents. It is supposed to be 25 miles an hour during regular time, not during school presence. But now school starts, I understand, tomorrow. I thought it was today. When I was walking my dog today, people were driving unusually fast. There was kids walking there. I thought it was today. I yelled at a gentleman, he stopped his car. He had a placard on there that said, police chief or fire chief or something on it. He stopped his rig and yelled at me. 
and told me to mind my own business. I thought that was completely uncalled for. I told him I was going to call the police. I decided to come and talk to you, Brad, instead. What kind of vehicle was that? It, it was some sort of SUV, dark colored SUV. It was a young gentleman with camo on. He said he was going 20 miles an hour, and he was not. But he had some sort of fire police thing on the front of his, I didn't get his license plate, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, is we need more presence there. We do not have a city police officer. We do not have a dog catcher. We do not have any kind of city police or anything in this town. We only have sheriffs, deputy sheriffs, and state police. We have nobody else we can rely on. So, Christy, just just so you're fully informed, the town contracts with the county. I understand and that. And so, with that contract, there's a certain number of law enforcement officers that are stationed within the city limits. Okay. A contractual agreement. And I have they, five who live in my neighborhood, Brad. I have five who live down there. Two who live in the cul-de-sac and three state police officers. And not about patrol there. We we can have a discussion with our sheriff and ask for to, them to step up with a little bit more uh, speed control in those areas. Do they patrol at night? Yes. That's all I'm asking. Okay, but let, let us uh, let us. And carry maybe this. some more stop signs in that area. So. Um, that I can't speak to, but the mayor is right behind us. <laughs> uh, where do you want them? Okay, I want uh, three-way stops, maybe some four-way, more four-way stop. Maybe okay. at the so, end of I Street, uh, or so on I Street and 4th Street. Mm -hmm. Generally, I don't go and speak for the town, but generally there's guidelines that come down from the state yep. on, on from but, speed to signs to whatever. I'm sure the mayor will check into that. What we can do, Christy, is... I'm waiting for a kid to get creamed. We, pardon? I'm waiting for a kid to get wiped out. No, we are not. And that's the last thing I want to see happen. We, the today school, there's orientation for some of the uh, new seventh graders, I believe. Yeah, and that's what start. I'm saying. But there is a speed zone there, 365 no, days a year, 25. We can have a discussion and ask our sheriff he would step up some presence there. Remember that law enforcement has to be every place. And I know that. And, and I all, understand all, all that. the thing you're asking is some more presence there, and that would help make a difference. One thing we've requested, the town's request over the years, was for a speed monitor sign to be put up, and that has an impact for the people that follow it. Um, do they take pictures and send them tickets? No, no you cannot do and that. So that doesn't do any good. Well, they, after a while, they sit there, they know it's there, they, they speed right on past. Absolutely, I, I know where you're saying, but what I will tell you, we'll have a discussion with our sheriff. I understand. And, see it, see and Mike's it. a good guy. I know. I, I grew up with all of you guys. I know, I know that. Things. Mark, you know that. I've been here. I just am tired of it. And it was hurtful. You know, when someone tells you to shut up and mind your own business. I can't fix that. I know I, that. I, I appreciate I, I just wanted you to hear me out. I appreciate And what I'm you're glad saying. you did. I appreciate Thank what you. you're saying, and we will follow up with I, you. I get it. That's all I wanted. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you coming in. I will work on that. We'll Please, I'm going to be on you. I know you will. I don't think I won't. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate all of it. I appreciate right, your when time. I, when I leave here, I'll hit the town hall. All uh, right. Thank you. I know it was hard for you to come in today. Christine. It was. It was very difficult for me to come in. I don't want to be a tattletale. You know that. I'm not like that. I'm the one that's out there screaming at them.
I don't have a filter. I, you're lucky I didn't say bad words. <laughs> <laughs> they worry about that all the time. I know. You know that. You know what I was like. Growing up with life was a whole lot different than... Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. All right. Goodbye. So at uh, 10.36, we will adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Mayor, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.